Hey guys, it's Chris. I'm excited to be here with you at Beachwood High School where hopefully in just a few short weeks we'll be kicking off the 2020 high school football season. Even more excited to come to you in a little bit of a different training format than what we normally do. Something that, that, that might help complement our uh, Tuesday night meetings that we hold during the season. Our hope is, is that we're going to be able to put together some of these 10 minute training videos um, to help give us a great refresher on things like mechanics and have conversations around rules and uh, game situation, game management philosophies uh, and the like. And so for the first couple weeks, a lot of these videos are going to be covered around short wing mechanics. Um, now, if you're not a short wing, I would still encourage you to, to keep watching this video and in fact, watch our future videos. Uh, because as we begin to figure out the best way to, to present these to the association, uh, we're going to be able to expand and start bringing in referees and back judges and umpires and begin to, to really build a, a library of, of good videos on uh, ways that we can become better officials, not just uh, season by season, but game by game and snap by snap. So in our first video, we're gonna take a look at, at some goal line mechanics. Uh, we're gonna to begin to break it down, both five-man mechanics and seven-man mechanics. Obviously, over the past couple years, we've been working some seven-man games, and while the mechanics are very similar, there are some, some key differences that we wanna make sure that we cover. Normally, in a scrimmage play, we wanna trail the play. We wanna let the play get in front of us. Um, in goal line mechanics, there's a very important line on the field, and that is the goal line. And so what this is designed to do is help get us into the best position to make the best call that we can uh, on the field. The reason we want to get to the goal line as quick as we can is because it is the most important line on the field. We need to be in the best position that we can to rule on, did the, the ball break the plane of the goal line? Was the runner's knee down prior to the ball crossing? So there's a lot of reasons why we want to make sure that we're there at the goal line to make that judgment call. So again, as a refresher, any time that we're starting inside of the five yard line, we want, to, we want to immediately at the snap go straight to the goal line. We don't want to hesitate. We don't want to read, pass, run. We want to get straight to that pylon to be able to, to rule on that touchdown or was the runner down in the field of play. As once we get to that goal line, one key to remember is that we don't ever want to come off of that goal line. There are some scenarios where we feel like just instinctively that we need to get out of the way. We need to get off of that goal line. And as opposed to going left or right to get out of the way, what we should do is actually go straight back. So one tip that I'll give you is pre-game as you're walking the field, usually there's those yellow or those orange pylons that say G on them. Get those out of the way so that way as you back up, you're not going to run into anything. But again, goal line mechanics say five and in, we want to get straight to the goal line and then we want to work our way back. We don't want to go side to side, always stay on that goal line. In the event that the ball is dead in the field of play, rather than again coming off prior to the, the end of the play, we want to stay on that goal line and then we want to come into the field of play and then come in and make our spot. Don't forget to crash if we've got a tight spot at the goal line. Uh, we want to make sure that we crash hard in to, to sell that spot. Now that Chris has talked us through what you're supposed to do, let's watch some examples of what to do and what not to do. So this is a play that shows a couple of great examples of really what we're trying to get away from and trying to avoid doing. I know everybody's working on their game, so we never try to pick on anybody. We want to use this purely as a training video because all of us may have caught ourselves in this position more than once. It's starting from inside the four, so we should be going to the goal line immediately. What you can see here is on the snap, we freeze because the play's coming right at us. We hesitate, we work through players, and then turn inside the field of play to punch up the touchdown. Let's watch it one more time. So again, what we want to do is we're going to get to the pylon immediately, work our way all the way back to the fence if we have to there. And then when you punch a touchdown, you want to punch it while looking at the players. Don't turn back into the field of play. Turn around and really look at the players just to keep an eye on anything extracurricular outside of the sideline. So in this play, we've got a great example of on the snap, inside the five. We're getting directly to the goal line on the snap, staying there, working back, and then selling the spot of the team. So let's talk a little bit about seven-man mechanics and how it differs from five-man. Obviously, we have a deep wing official on our sideline to help us out, but where does their responsibility start and where does ours end? So anytime we're in seven man mechanics, you wanna make sure you pregame this um, with both your, your deep wing, but also the cross field partners as well to make sure everybody is on the same page. So, so what you wanna include in that conversation is, are we gonna do seven yard line and in for goal line mechanics, or are we gonna do the traditional five? Regardless how we do it, we wanna make sure that somebody is always on that goal line to be able to rule on a touchdown. 
So one thing that's important to communicate is, is obviously who's got that spot. And so pre-snap, make sure you're communicating with your deep wing. If it's on the two, it's theirs. Anything inside the two, we're giving that spot to the deep wing. Anything outside of the two is gonna be our spot. So it's important for us to get that. So let's say that we have an example of a, a ball carrier that goes into the end zone and he's running towards that back pylon. One thing we don't wanna do is run immediately in front of our deep wing. Always run around him to go towards that ball carrier. Let's break up anything that's going on back there, get that ball, and again, let's get it back into the umpire to get the PAT. So now let's take a look at reverse mechanics uh, when it comes to the goal line, which is a little bit different in the fact that we're going the, the long side of the field. So what we just covered is going into the end zone, but what happens when we're going out? So mechanics will tell us that anytime we start on the three yard line or in, so if we're three yard line to the goal line, our first reaction as soon as that ball should be snapped is to go back straight to that goal line. As a short wing, we've got to recognize that our referee is probably going to take that back line because that's an important line as well we need to make sure that we have that goal line covered. And so anytime we're on the three yard line, we're gonna work back until again, that goal line is no longer threatened. Uh, so once the ball is, is, is clearly gone beyond the, the line of game or the line of scrimmage or a pass has crossed the line of scrimmage, we can then release downfield. But let's make sure from three and, and in, we're going straight to the goal line. If we're on the five to the three, we wanna still be cautious of that goal line. We wanna be able to read and react. So as an example, if we're starting on the five and the quarterback takes a shotgun snap, that might be a situation where we wanna go straight back because there's a higher propensity that there could be a safety or some sort of danger there at the goal line that we need to make sure that we're there to rule on.